Testing continues at Starbase as SpaceX prepares for 24-7 static fires. An Egyptian comm satellite is put in its place as Falcon 9 breaks another record. Polaris Dawn keeps us in the loop, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. After undergoing cryo and thrust tests, Starship 24 was lifted onto its transport mount Thursday morning in Boca Chica, Texas, and moved back to the high bay later that evening, where it is expected to receive its Raptor engines. A new Edom test tank took its place at the launch site, and will begin its own regimen next week. This vessel will try out new tank bulkheads the company has been working on most of the year, and they differ from the prior design in that they'll be built using fewer pieces of steel, and only a single section to further streamline the manufacturing process. The one pictured here from Starship Gazer shows domes with three stack sections or layers welded together. All of us have been waiting for next week to come for quite some time, longer than we thought we'd have to, because the FAA is once again expected to announce the final results of their environmental assessment for the Boca Chica area on Monday. Their ruling will determine whether SpaceX can proceed with Starship's first orbital test flight, or if the company will have to wait even longer until a completely new EIS can be conducted. In which case, Elon said they'll shift their attention to launching from Florida, where the East Coast Launch and Integration Tower is standing by for stacking. On Wednesday afternoon, SpaceX launched Egypt's Nilesat 301 communication satellite to geostationary orbit on top of a reused Falcon 9 booster flying for the seventh time. Ignition and liftoff. It successfully landed on Just Read the Instructions, stationed in the Atlantic, making it the 99th reflight of a booster, 123rd booster landing, and according to Tim Dodd, the longest distance a Falcon 9 booster has ever landed away from the launch pad, beating the previous record of 681 clicks. However, I will add that the Falcon Heavy core booster for STP-2 back in June of 2019 flew much further to its awaiting drone ship, 1,240 clicks off the coast, but it didn't exactly stick the landing. So technically, the current all-time successful record holder for a SpaceX booster goes to Arabsat 6A's Falcon Heavy core stage that landed 970 clicks offshore in April of 2019, even though it too was destroyed when it tipped over into the sea on its way back to port. In other SpaceX news, the Players Program released a new update on their website yesterday, explaining what the crew of Players Don has been up to lately. As we discussed in previous videos, they started their training off with some open water diving, then went to Ecuador to climb mountains and active volcanoes, but in the months ahead, they'll undergo extensive dragon simulations, participate in centrifuge and hypoxia exercises, and receive hands-on medical training. The article also provided some information in regard to the EVA. They'll coast to an altitude approximately 1,400 clicks up for the event after verifying their capsule was healthy. After that, they'll head back down to an elliptical orbit of 700 by 190 clicks for the rest of the mission. During the EVA, their scuba and buddy support skills will help them communicate for this first commercial spacewalk, if their mouths stop working, I guess. And they also released the design of their mission coin, but uh, that's not for you. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. NASA announced on Wednesday that the James Webb Space Telescope came in contact with a micrometeor between May 23rd and 25th, six months after its launch to space on Christmas Day. The Space Stone impacted segment C3, one of the telescope's primary mirrors. The spacecraft was engineered to withstand a beating from micrometeors, as tests were conducted using both simulations and real impacts on mirror samples in the lab. But this one was larger than anything that was modeled and beyond what could have been tested on the ground. It was a lone wayward rock, not a meteor shower. For that, they can instruct the telescope to maneuver in a defensive manner with optics turned away from the threat. This was considered an unavoidable chance event to be expected more often as the years, or in this case, months go by. However, Webb was designed and built using 18 mirrors that can adjust position to enable partial correction after such events. Although not all degradation can be canceled out by doing this, it does minimize the effect of impacts. NASA reported that, quote, After initial assessments, the team found the telescope is still performing at a level that exceeds all mission requirements, despite a marginally detectable effect in the data. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in. A very big thank you to all my members supporting the channel. I want to invite everyone to check out and participate in our locals community where members only content is uploaded. A link is provided below. Have a nominal weekend and until next time, Godspeed.